recording. Uh, well, I had the homework pulled up. Let's see if I can find one. OK, here's one. I'm going to pull it up. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to make it bigger. Well, I'll make it bigger for a minute because it's going to cut off your chart, but I'm going to make it bigger for you so you can see it. Where is my? Why can't I make it bigger? Hmm. Usually I can make it bigger. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Oh well, let me go here and see if I can make it bigger here. Let's see if that helps. No, for some reason I can't make it bigger. I'm sorry. Huh. Usually you can make it bigger. Compute the gross income, adjusted gross income, and taxable income in the following situation. Use the exemptions and deductions in the table to the right. Explain how it's decided whether to itemize deduction or use the standard deduction. Sarah is married, but she and her husband file separately. Okay, so that's that column right there. Uh, her salary was 30100 so I'm going to write that down. Salary is, well, I done lost it, 30,100. And it says she earned $270 in interest. She has $2130 in itemized deduction. Itemized deduction is equal to $2130. Now let's let's go ahead and take care of one thing. Let me get the handy dandy. There we go. All right. So first of all, cat's been playing with my. There we go. So first of all, I want everybody to look at the itemized deduction. Hers, she's keeping her receipts. Let's call those receipts. OK. And I before E except after C, right? Is that right? Somebody help me out because I suck sure. at IE words. Is that right? OK, nobody's going to talk to me. I heard Justin say something. I don't know the rule. Say again, Justin. I didn't say that. Oh, I think I before E except after C, isn't it? I think that's right. I think so too. The reason I'm putting receipts here is to kind of give you an indication of what they're talking about when she's talking about itemized deductions. In other words, her fuel, you know, let's say she works in her car a good bit her fuel, her payments on her car, that kind of stuff. She keeps her receipts. But the government is going to give her 6350. So which one should she take? Should she do the itemized or should she do the deduction? Come on, you got a 50-50 shot at it. That means I want somebody to say something. The deduction. 
the deduction because you want to take out as much as you can before you get to the brackets. I'm going to write that in red. Some of y'all, y'all didn't get that. You want to take out as much as possible before the brackets. Now somebody tell me the reason reasoning. Come on. The less you make, the less you what? You spend. The, the less you, you owe. Taxes. Yes. The less you make, the less you owe. The less you run through the brackets, the less you owe. The less you run through the brackets. And I'm going to pull this up in just a minute. The less you owe. Uncle Sam. Why do you think people take their money and send it to overseas bank accounts? Is there anything wrong with that? No, I don't think there is. I mean, if you work hard and let's say that Miss Holder, let's say that she she does a series of paintings and let's say that she gets a million dollars a painting, if not more. Should she be should she be penalized for making lots of money? I don't think so. So, you know, if she wants to send her money over to overseas account, more power to her. OK, so if you're talking about money before the brackets. You want to take out as much as possible. So in this case, we're not going to go with the itemized deduction. We're not going to go with our receipts. We're going to go with what? We're going to go. The standard what? Deduction. Of. I think it was 6350, but let's move it down and see. 6350. So we're going to take 30,100. We're going to add our interest. And that's our income. I'm going to put parentheses around that. Because that's our income. And then we're going to minus. 6350. And let's see how many independents she claims. And claiming five what? Exemptions. So she's saying there's five people that basically live in her house, her and four other people. So we got to multiply five times 40, 50. So plus five times 40, 50. And that is what your taxable income it's going to equal. So I need you to take out your handy dandy calculator. And I need you to. Do that right quick. So I'm going to pull out my handy dandy calculator. And make it smaller so you can see it. Oh Lord. There we go. And that's going to be 30,100 plus 270. 
and that comes out to be 303.70. Minus sixty three fifty plus four times forty fifty. That's twenty two five fifty. So thirty thousand three seventy minus twenty two five fifty is equal to dang, she's getting off pretty good. Uh, you multiplied four by forty fifty, but you wrote five below. It should be five. Thank you. So let me do that again. Five times Appreciate the communication, Justin. 40, 50, rest of y'all suck. Equals 20, 250. Oh, okay, and then I'm gonna add that to 6350 plus 6350. This is very high. Twenty six six hundred. So that's twenty six six hundred minus thirty three seventy. Dang, she's coming out pretty good. She only has a taxable income of three thousand seven hundred and seventy bucks. She's doing real good. Well, that's how you find taxable income. So she's in the first tax bracket. That's why you shouldn't have a $30,000 job with five people in your house. That's that dang old underwater basket weaving degree. I bet some of y'all looked up underwater basket weaving, didn't you? Her gross income, well, that's going to be uh what is it 40 30 because 30, 30, 30, she didn't have any she didn't have any expenses her adjusted gross income is 3370 because there's nothing else to come out okay she should let me read it right this time because last time I read the wrong thing. She should go with the standard deduction because her itemized deduction is lower. So which one says she needs to go with the standard deduction? It's either Bravo or Charlie because it would deduct more from her taxable income. It, it kind of helps when you read the question right. Last Wednesday I, or last Friday, I was reading the, I was using the exemption. Her taxable income is 3,770 bucks. So how much does she owe Uncle Sam? Well, somebody take 3770 and multiply it by 0.10. Please don't use your calculator. That would be $377. So what's her name? Sarah. My mother's name is Sarah, only she uses an H on the end. Sarah owes Uncle Sam $377 in taxes. Of course, she's going to cover that fairly well because if she made $30,000 by paycheck, she's got well enough uh, 
check stubs to pay three hundred and seventy seven dollars. Unless she's. You know, well, she still have enough with thirty thousand. Because if you take twenty percent of thirty thousand, that's six hundred bucks. So she's got well enough, and that's the standard. If you want to say, like, if you win a million dollars, how much is going to go to taxes? You just say twenty percent off your head because that's usually the way it works out. About twenty percent is going to be shaved off before you even get a check. Okay, so you know, twenty percent of thirty thousand is three hundred and three hundred, so that would be six hundred. That's what she's going to get back in check stubs. So you take the check stubs, run it against what she owes, and she's going to get a check back for two hundred and what, two hundred and twenty-three dollars, probably somewhere around there. Does everybody understand that? Somebody tell me if they don't understand what we just did, because that's a test question right there. And y'all do know that I'm going over, you know, I haven't looked and seen if we got, let's see if we got any homework problems. I don't know, y'all don't send any, so I don't usually check y'all's folder because y'all don't communicate with me very well. I don't see one. What a surprise. Anybody got a question on this one? I'm opening them up. Anybody got a question? So I covered the material so well that y'all don't have a question. Is that it? Gmail. Why do y'all insist on not communicating? Is it instilled in you? Is it is it that or what? I don't know what everybody else's problem is. So so you agree with me? Everybody else is kind of buzzkill. I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. It's 930. People are still asleep. Well, I got I got this thing that I need to tell you all about. It's called life. Those people that use that excuse all the time, it's going to kick you in the ass. Watch watch bar rescue. Watch it. I usually don't speak when other people are speaking in the room with me because I'm in work whenever I'm in with your class. Listen, Miss Gill, you're about the you and Mr. Justin and and and, and a couple others. You are the only ones that communicate. There's people in this room that have not communicated in this classroom the whole semester. And I just find that just amazing. I just find that amazing. They don't say nothing. It just blows my mind. I don't I don't understand how you have a conversation with anybody. Anyway, next. Maybe they're mute. Oh, is that it? Good listeners. Yeah. yeah, good listeners. All right, you try this one. And if you can't do it, then that means you're a failure. Let's go. Compute the gross income, adjusted gross income, and taxable income in the following situation. Use the exemption and deduction in the table to the right. Explain how it's decided, blah, 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 blah. A man is single, so he's going to be doing single, and earned... 37,700 bucks. He receives 330 in interest. He contributed, so that's going to come out. And he's got $5,240 in receipts. So is he going to go with the itemized deduction or standard deduction? That means I want y'all to pick one of them. I want you to say something. Uh, the standard one? Standard. Thank you again, Justin. I appreciate it. 6350. He's going to pick the 6350 because that's going to take more. Now, does it say anything about his, his uh, exemptions? 
It doesn't say whether he has a family. It just says is single. So that means one times 40, 50. Because it doesn't say he has any kids. It doesn't say if he's shacking up, married, or anything. So that means you're to assume the single, you know, he's single. It's just him. All right, so let's do his taxable income. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to be writing some stuff over here on the whiteboard. Give you a minute or two to do that because this is a test question. I wanted to at least do a couple of these because, you know, I want you to be able to have notes in your notebook to, uh, you know, refer to on your test. I had to take my truck, get a new transfer case put in it. I hate to see how much that's going to cost. And nothing. Okay. So here's what I got so far. There's his gross income plus the 330 minus 530. So clear. And clear. So 37, 700 plus 330. Minus 530. 37,500. And what is that called? That means I want somebody to say something. If this is called, let's let's call this up here. Let's highlight this. Let's call this, this is the gross income. There's the gross income. What is this called? Uh, is that the adjusted gross income? Adjusted gross income. So just to make sure everybody understands because the book and the slides can be kind of, you know, putting on airs with their language. Adjusted gross income basically means the total amount after income and expenses. Here's your expenses, and that's your additional income. So after you add your income together and you subtract any expenditures, well, what about gas? Well, that's not expenditure. That's an exemption, okay? You take that down to the exemption, okay? 
And expenditure would be like, you know, paying for a retirement. That would be something that comes out of your, you know, check or whatever, or you pay out of your check, whichever. See, I pay toward a 401k and I pay toward my retirement. I do two separate ones, but that's included in my check, my check stub. So that goes on my W-2. So my accountant adds up all that and subtracts it when they go through my W-2 and they find, okay, 401k, bip, they take, they, they subtract that. Uh, deferred compensation plan, which is called retirement. Flip, they take that off. <coughs> I turn in my interest on any savings accounts, on any stocks. They add that, and that is called my adjusted gross income. This is your gross income right here. This is your adjusted gross income. So now what? Now you need to take off the expenditures. I meant not the expenditures, the deductions and the exemptions. So take off uh, exemptions and deductions. So 37, 500. And as Justin said, you're going to take off the 63.50. Let's go back and look at it. You're going to take off the 63.50 because it's more than 52.40. 63.50 plus 40.50. Now, the reason I didn't multiply that by anything is because that's a single person, single. Technically, there's one right here. And you multiply one times 40, 50. So that's going to be 37,500 minus, what is this, 10,400. And that comes up to what? 27,100. Somebody check my math, please. I got the same thing. Okay, good. Now, we're going to run this through the brackets. I'm going to add a little bit to this question because since we've done all this, let's go ahead and finish it. Let's go ahead and run this through the brackets. Okay. So take off the exemption and deduction. I took it off. And that's my taxable income. So go back to the chart. And I want you to run 27,100. I want you to run it through the brackets. So that means the first nine run 27,100 through the brackets. Now 27,100, where is it going to fall? That means I want somebody to say something. Besides Justin. Where is 27,100 going to fall? Anybody? We're not moving ahead until somebody says it.
What was the question? Maybe they forgot. Well, you can't answer it because I'm waiting on some other people to answer it. I said, where does the 27, 100, where does it fall? And you can't answer it, Justin. You've already interacted enough. They, okay. Yeah, you can't answer it. Okay. Waiting for somebody else to answer it. We at Louisiana, did you say something? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I've been having mic issues. Sorry. Um, are you asking, like, where is it in the tax rate? Because it's 15%. Yeah, the brackets. These are the brackets right here. Which bracket are you? Are you in the 15% bracket or the 25% bracket? Where are you? The second one, 15%. The second 15%, bracket. Yeah. The 15% bracket, the 15% tax rate, whatever you want to call it, okay? Back before yeah. they called it tax rates, they were called brackets, tax brackets. And now they're called tax rates. So you would be in the second bracket. So yes, that sir. means on your first 93.25, first 93.25 of your taxable income, is going to be multiplied by 10%, which means you're going to move the decimal one place to the left, which means 932.5. Okay, now your total, your ta total taxable income falls in the second bracket. So you're going to multiply some quantity times 0.15. So what is that quantity? Well, it's going to be the quantity of 27, I don't lost it, 27,100 minus 93,25. Now, we talked about this Friday. Why am I subtracting the 93,25? So I don't what? When you owe somebody money, what do you never want to do? You never want to pay them what? Not once, but what? Go ahead, Mr. Brown. Hi, can you hear me? I'm sorry. That's all right. Go ahead. I saw you. I saw your light flash up. You don't want to pay what? Twice. Or you don't want to pay twice. I appreciate you interacting. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Yeah, okay? I'm sorry. You know, My mic is like really messed that's up. That's all right. You're trying. At least you're trying. You and Justin and Miss Gill, you're going to have nice offices. Okay, you're not going to have the janitor's closet with uh, somebody's. Okay, somebody's must be. I can't see the conversation because I got it on enrollment. Okay, so I'll have to switch it over to the chat. See, so Miss Louisiana, thank you for thank you for uh, co cooperating also. So you don't want to pay it twice, so you subtract it, 
And that's going to be, let's go ahead and take our handy dandy calculator. And that's going to be 2700, 2700 minus 9325. And the remainder of your taxable income is going to be multiplied at 15%. Twenty six. Sixty six point twenty five. Add those two together. Nine thirty two point five. And what is that called? Thirty five ninety eight. Point seventy five. Somebody tell me what that's called. That's what you what? You owe Uncle Sam that money. So you owe Uncle Sam 3598 or whoever this guy is that made 37,300. So I'm going to highlight that green because that's that's what you get that's what you do when you when you make when you do your own taxes. You find out how much you owe Uncle Sam. Now, what comes off of this? What is subtracted off of this if you have them? What they're what are they called? Tax blank. Look in your notes for Friday. I went over this Friday. What is the only thing taken off of what you owe Uncle Sam? What do they call tax? Tax deductions. Blank. Not deductions. Starts Exemptions. with a C. What? Oh, never mind. Starts with a C. Tax, tax breaks. Credit. Starts with a C. Trying to get you to remember the exact wording because it makes a difference. But Miss Holder, you're getting there. Not tax breaks, but tax starts with a C. Cuts. Or, huh? Yeah. Somebody said something. I believe credits. she said tax cuts. Tax credits. Good. Whoever said that. I don't know who said it, but thank you. So let's put that in red right here. Tax credits, because evidently y'all didn't put it in your notes last Friday, come off of what is owed. OK, so if I have any tax credits, how will you know if you have tax credits? Well, it's, it's called watching the news, keeping up with current events, uh, you know, doing those things that some of y'all cannot stand to do. All right. That's how you know. And plus, if you do something kind of out of the ordinary, like solar or electric, it's whatever the the installer or the person that does it for you or the person that sells you this stuff will usually tell you if it's a what? A tax credit. So you could go up to your handy dandy, you know, again, it, it, it basically you have to do a little bit of, you know, research. And you go to your handy dandy Google. And you pull up, sorry, I can't hit the right button. 2021 for this year, tax credits. I don't know if it'll list it or not. Child taxes. Um, Let's look for 2020 since that's the last year that's passed. Sucked, but let's check it anyway. 
2020 tax credits. There we go. What tax credit do I qualify for? And you can look it up and, you know, claiming credits can wipe out your tax bill. Um, looking for some examples. Here we go. American Opportunity, Lifetime Learning Credit, Adoption Tax Credit, Earning Income Credit, Premium Tax Credit, Foreign Tax Credit, Retirement Savings Contribution, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they give you some other ideas, you know. They just have to read and do Earned Income Tax Credit. Um, I'm looking for stuff like solar and I'm looking for that, but you just have to do your research. And usually who would know who gets tax credits? Your what? Your accountant. That's why people, unless you're an accountant, people should not do their own taxes. If you had to tell me I had to do my own taxes, I would just go ahead and curl up in a ball and dig a ditch for the rest of my life because I'm not I'm not a tax I'm not an accounting person. I mean I can get by with a little bit of accounting like for my business or my farm. I know that you know the 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 income needs to be more than what's going out. I got that. But as far as accounting and stuff like that, that's why they pay the money to the people that gets the accounting degrees. All right, so let's look at what we did here. First of all, we figured gross income, what we started out with, we added our interest and we subtracted our expenditures, which would be, you know, contributing, contributing to retirement, okay? That gave us an adjusted gross income of 37.5. And that's what we take our deductions and exemptions off of. And when we take the exemptions and the deductions off, that leaves us with taxable income to go through the brackets. Taxable income that goes through the brackets. And then we look at the brackets. And the first nine $9,325 of our paycheck, of what we owe, sorry, is slated at 10%. And then 27100 minus. Now, what if you made 30000 or above the second one? Well, then you would take the max of the second and subtract that and there, and then the rest would fall in the third bracket, which I think is at 17% or whatever. Anybody got any questions on this one? Because this is a test question, even though this is not on the question, I added it so you would have it. Does anybody have a question on this one? Now you see why it's important to know this stuff. Let me ask a question. How many of you had no idea how to do this kind of stuff? Just raise your virtual hand. How many of you, 12 years of school, had no idea how to actually do taxable income? Anybody? Raise your hand and leave them up. I, I just want to know, just curious. Don't you think this would be something? Don't you think this is something that should be taught in 11th or 12th grade instead of underwater firefighting classes? Absolutely. Yes. But you ask yourself, why don't they teach it? And I'm just going to let you come up with your own observations. All right. So take your hands down so everybody go back in alphabetical order, please. All right, so let's look at one more. Okay, we're out of time. I didn't know what time it was. So I'm going to shut down the uh, recording. Okay, we're basically finished with chapter four. 
So what does that mean for Wednesday? Test. That means we're going to go over the test. Yes, we're going to go over the test. And that means that you should have your homework finished. So y'all have a yes, good sir. afternoon, and I will see y'all Wednesday, okay? Thank you, okay. too.